It's five o'clock and um, I'd like to get started. Uh, welcome parents and families. Uh, we're delighted to be here again with you all today. And uh, today's topic is academic success. And um, I have colleagues uh, who support academics on campus and uh, collectively we wanna welcome you to Cal Maritime, Keel Holler family, and to a wonderful chapter in your life with your students going to uh, college. Uh, for those of you who are new today uh, to this group, my name is Benita Dillon, and I serve as the new students and family programs director, which uh, translates to me being your liaison at Cal Maritime. If you have joined our Facebook page, you've probably seen some posts from me. Uh, it's been a very busy last couple of weeks, so I've been slow in posting, but over the course of the year, you'll see uh, more of those. Um, I'm also here as a resource for you to reach out and ask any questions, or if you need any direction on how to contact um, departments on campus, or if you need an answer that you've not been able to find, um, a little bit later in the call, I will add my phone number where you can text me or call me and I will put my personal email as well as the orientation email for you to uh, stay connected. I have a few housekeeping items. Um, please keep your devices on mute during the presentation. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask questions of our presenters today by adding uh, them into chat at the end of the presentation. I will read out those questions. If for some reason, for travel or other reasons, you are unable to uh, provide your questions in chat, I will um, open it up to where you can unmute and ask your questions verbally. We'll hold that till the very end. If you have any specific details about your student, this might not be the best avenue to discuss those details. This call is recorded and is shared on our web page. So we don't want too much private information out there. You can uh, text or email any of us uh, today or use orientation at csum.edu uh, as um, an outreach uh, uh, email address and send us your questions there. Um, if you have questions that are unrelated to today's topic, I'd like for you to hold off on those uh, and either email those to me or you can um, wait till that, that topic is being discussed. Um, and that was everything <laughs> I had. Uh, again, orientation at csum.edu. Uh, is where um, most of the orientation related questions are coming to us and I'm responding. Um, at the end, if there is time, I'm happy to go over the logistics for move-in slash family day, which is August 21. Uh, I'll go through what is expected uh, or what you can expect to happen that day on campus, uh, but that's only if we have time. Uh, with that, I will invite my colleagues to get us started. Um, I'll start with um, sharing the point for today. So here we go. All right, I'm going to kick us off. I know, first. thank you. I'm trying to <laughs> move along the. Hmm. Technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, but go ahead, uh, Crystal. Thank you so much uh, for moving us along. I'll I'll move the the uh, slide in just a second. Perfect. So welcome everyone. Um, you're gonna hear from three of some of the academic support offices today, and I am up first representing University Advising. So. Um, a lot of campuses have academic advisors. And so um, when they come to Cal Maritime, they're, you know, what's a university advisor versus an academic advisor? Um, and we're really here to help the student with their academics, but also with everything else. So we're really here to help the students navigate college in general. So we're super knowledgeable and experts in CSU graduation requirements, 
Cal Maritime academic requirements, Cal Maritime policies, and all of the resources available on campus. So I've had students kind of label me as an academic advisor slash life coach. <laughs> so essentially, if anything comes up for your student, we're a great point of contact to start at. Next slide. And I forgot my contact information and Katie's contact information were on the previous screen, um, but you can find us by searching University Advisor and our webpage will pop up with our contact info too. So a couple of common things that we help students with um, is developing their plans for graduation. So students can come in as a first time freshman and they're on the traditional four year path. A lot of students can come in, they're a first time freshman, but Maybe they want to take it at a slower pace, so we're able to customize a five-year plan for them. Some students are transfers, and so they want to get done a little bit earlier, so we do two-year plans, three-year plans. Uh, we also help students who, if for some reason they get off track, they didn't pass a math class or something, we can rearrange their graduation plan and get them back on track, maybe at a semester or something like that. So moral of the story. We help with graduation plans and we can help customize your students plan for graduation. We also help in developing college skills. Um, a lot of students think that it'll come to them, but time management, um, study skills, something we partner a lot with tutoring on um, and the other professors and academic support services because it's a lot. It's a lot to ask students to come to campus, have their own freedom, and then also stay on top of all their stuff. So if a student's ever struggling with something, I feel very overwhelmed with this, come see us. We're happy to help point them in the right direction and sort of talk through what they're struggling with. A big part of our job is also identifying what specifically might a student be struggling with and what kind of resources and services are out there to help them. So maybe a student is dealing with a personal thing that happened with a family member. We can talk that through and figure out, you know, how can we email your professors? Is there support services on campus like counseling services that you might want to use? Um, so very catered to the individual students' needs. They come see us, let them know or let us know what's going on so that we can find a resource um, or a department to help them out. We partner heavily with students, uh, faculty advisors. So during orientation week, students are gonna get to find out who their faculty advisor is. And that's sort of their professor who teaches in their major and is their mentor for their, their time here at Cal Maritime. And they're really great at knowing what the career paths are after graduation. Um, they're great for knowing what the curriculum entails and sort of how to study for the specific engineering, business, oceanography courses. Um, and me and Katie, University Advising, really partner with those professors to, you know, develop graduation plans so that students don't take something before they take something else. So we're great at sort of course and major advisement. Big thing we help out with, registering for classes. If something fills up, students come to our office freaked out. You know, I didn't get my schedule that I wanted. Am I going to be here for another year? We usually can help find uh a sort of alternate schedule for them or readjust their plan to make it work. So we help a lot with that. Like I said previously, we help uh, in our specialists with policies and forms on campus. So a student might be required to fill out a time conflict form or a waiver of prerequisite because they're taking a class ahead of schedule, but the major advisor said that was okay. Uh, we can help them fill out those sometimes complicated bureaucratic forms and help them know what the process is so that they hit as less speed bumps as possible. Um, yeah, if students ever have a question about why do I have to take a humanities? Um, what's this advanced writing class? Do I really need to do it? We're very in tune and up to date on the CSU policies, executive orders, and we kind of know the why behind why the requirements are the way they are and we're happy to explain those to students and and make sure they're feeling comfortable with everything and like i said and more if students have anything else that comes up in their life send them our way we'll help them get to where they need to go this is my last leg how to contact us you're welcome to take a picture of it it's also on our website 
students can meet with us in a bunch of different ways. So they can make an appointment online with the Passport Navigate app. That is a student app for students only. They'll use their Cal Maritime email credentials to get into it. And they'll be sort of directed on how to do that during orientation week. They can drop by the lab building, me and Erica sitting there. So we're happy to see them if they wanna walk by and kind of ask a quick question. They're welcome to email us if they have a very simple question that they just want answered over an email. And we also have a university advising website, which has a ton of tools, um, some pretty cool links out to crash study courses and blank progress reports and anything you might sort of need related to advising or um, some different types of academic success. So we're really excited to help your student and we look forward to meeting them during orientation. That's it for university advising. Thank you, Crystal. Sorry, there you go. Uh, so next up is tutoring services. Um, so my name is Erica Nelson. I'm the coordinator for student academic support, um, which basically means I, or success and support, um, but I run the tutoring services program and sort of contribute to all different kinds of specifically academic success um, on Cal Maritime's campus. So we have kind of a lot of different ways we do that. It's primarily through tutoring, so one-on-one -on -one individual tutoring, um, but we also, I conduct workshops and we keep a library of online resources. Um, so this page kind of gives a little bit more description into the different services that, that my office offers. Um, the first really big one is, is tutoring. It is one-on-one -on -one sessions, so a student will, um, make an appointment with a tutor and they are free. They're completely included in the cost of tuition. So that's sometimes a, a stumbling block for students if they're not sure if tutoring costs money, it does not. Um, they're also completely confidential. So whatever happens in a tutoring session, it doesn't get back to the professor. It's very, it's focused on peer, peer learning. Um, we also hold academic preparedness workshops. So that's one thing Crystal was talking about that um, she and I work together on is study skills, time management, um, and the schedule for those workshops will be up on our website, which you'll see on the next slide when we get there. Um, so you can always keep keep an eye out, be like, oh, hey, I think there's a study skills workshop this week. Maybe you should go to it. So that's something you can keep an eye on. Um, as I said, we also have online resources. So it's just csum.edu backslash tutoring, and you can see our um, or wealth of resources, it's sort of a, a first stop for academic success. If a student is like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really ready to make a tutoring appointment yet. I don't know if I want to go to a workshop. They can check out the tutoring website, which has both college life skills, as I said, the study skills, time management. There's even a how to talk to your professor page. Um, but we're also working on building up some writing and math resources as well. So that's a good place to kind of send your student if they're not quite sure if they wanna make an appointment yet for tutoring, they can find some more basic resources there. Um, we also run the supplemental instruction program, which is, it's basically like tutoring, but the tutors are assigned to a specific class. So especially some of the first year courses that your students might be in will have a supplemental instructor assigned to them, which means the SI as they're called, will hold weekly study sessions and also be available for those tutoring appointments. So if a student is really struggling in, you know, calc and they're like, you know, I, I think I need to go to the study session this week, they already have a supplemental or a tutor built into that course to kind of provide some more specialized support in that area. Um, another thing I am hoping to roll out this year is affinity study spaces. So these will be somewhat unmonitored free study spaces for students who belong to specific identities. Um, so this is a, a space for students to kind of create some community, but with an academic focus as opposed to a social focus. Um, and the final is learning coaching. So again, similar to Crystal, um, if students wanna come to me and talk about learning skills, maybe learning styles, I have a lot of experience in learning styles and how to kind of figure out how you learn best. Um, which could then make their college experience so much easier if they can maybe talk to their professor and say, you know, I talked to Erica and I think I might be a visual learner. Is there a way we can go over by my homework in that way? Um, so that's something you can also talk to your students about is coming to see me about any variety of questions related to how they learn and how they could maybe learn best. Um, if you go to the next slide. 
And these are the ways to access tutoring services. So students make an appointment online through the Passport Navigate app that Crystal was talking about. Um, I know as parents, you don't have access to this, but if your student ever wonders, all I have to do is go to appointments, tutoring, subject, choose a tutor. It's really simple. Um, and they can also find more information about that on our website, which is csum.com backslash tutoring. And that's when we'll have the up-to-date workshop schedules. Schedules are not quite yet, but they will be, um, as well as our tutoring availability. And the email is tutoring at csum.edu if your students have any questions or if you have any questions. And that's about it. Thank you, Erica. And uh, we'll move over to the next presenter. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Mara Winchell and I work in the disability and, ex, ex, excuse me, let me start over, accessibility and disability services office. Um, and I am in the student service center. You're welcome to stop by. Um, and then my door is all, also always open for your student as well. Um, I'm ready for the next slide. So there is an application process for our program, and it is the student's responsibility to fill out the application, and then there's more information about that below. So we do, we do have them actually do this process. Um, and um, so you'll, your student will complete the online application by going to our website, the information is there. So it's our website and then you can click on disability services. There's also more information for you there. If you'd like to know more about our services and some of the things that we offer. The student needs to provide documentation if they do apply for our program. And some of that documentation um, examples would be an IEP, uh, 504, a medical report. And we need the student to, after that, complete an in-person intake appointment with us. Okay. So some of the accommodations that we have are listed in this slide. We have academic accommodations and then also campus-based accommodations. Um, and so some of the academic accommodations that we have, reduced distraction testing, additional test time, use of non-graphing calculators, use of a laptop, use of audio recorders, note takers, preferential seating. Those are a few examples. And then on campus, we do have housing resources as well. So some of our students, um, they are eligible for a room alone, um, or they can be placed on at a certain, in a certain area of the housing. And, and then there are uniform modifications being made as well. Okay. There's some, I have some things listed here, um, just so that there's an understanding. Post-secondary institutions are not required for the, the following items below. Um, so, we don't do the testing or assessment of learning or medical or psychological disabilities. We don't provide personal assistance and we don't provide personal or private tutoring. We don't prepare IEPs as well. Um, if you have more questions about where you can, you can get testing, I can help you with that. And my information will be at the end of my slides and you can contact me and I can help you with that. 
So I do have some recommendations. If your student is interested in services with our program, you should have testing done in the senior year of high school to have current documentation so we can de determine the accommodations. And if you have an IEP or other testing documents, keep a copy of that so that your student can share that easily. And I'm open to answering confidential questions you may have. And my information is listed there. Um, we can, I can answer questions for you, but I can't give you information, um, confidential information that your student has provided us with. So I'm happy to talk to any of you if you have any more questions. Thank you, Mara. Um, I'll stop sharing now and look at my chat. Um, all right, families, um, please feel free to um, start asking your questions if you have any. We are very familiar that when our presenters do a thorough job of sharing information, there may not be very many questions to follow up on. Uh, so we, all, we, we understand that as well. So we'll give you a couple of minutes to start um, sharing anything that you want to ask. In the meantime, um, I'll cover real quick uh, what to expect on the 21st when you arrive here. Your students uh, should already have received an email from ResLife saying uh, that their um, check-in time is, for example, two o'clock. And what we hope that you will do is come a little bit early, check out the campus, enjoy a meal uh, at um, our dining center uh, at the waterfront. Uh, but we would like to have you in the Physical Education and Aquatic Center, which is called PIAC uh, for short, uh, right on time or a few minutes early. And um, at two o'clock, at which point we'll check you in, hand you your board pass and your key uh, or give your student that, in, that stuff. And they will be whisked away into uh, the uniform area where they will pick up all their uniform items and be given a big box to get everything in there. While uh, right next to the check-in, uh, you will have access to uh, representatives from various departments uh, on campus. So you can put a face to a name, ask any questions, meet, our, uh, meet, meet folks from campus. We'll have... Um, leadership going in and out of that space. There'll be coffee for you. So you can hang out while your student picks up their uniform. And then you'll be uh, requested to head back to your vehicle with that box and make your way to the residence hall that your student's going to. So we're expecting that this will happen between uh, 30 to 40 minutes max. Uh, so if your time again is two o'clock, uh, folks in the residence hall uh, are waiting for you between 2.30 and 2.40. Um, there will be um, orientation leaders there who will help unload your vehicle and take you to your room. However, the person driving the vehicle will not be able to get out of their car and um, they'll have to drive and park their car back in the parking lot where you parked in the morning. That parking lot is lot O and you can uh, arrange to meet with your family uh, at some location at some point and connect up later again. If you wish to come back to the res hall to see what your student's room looks like, perfectly fine. We'll have a van running. It's an uh, electric van. It has, it's mostly green and it has our uh, mascot printed on it, uh, the keel hauler. Um, and uh, you can hop on that one. It'll take you to the res halls. Uh, there will be other shuttles that are black and they're larger and those don't go up to the res halls. So please be sure to get on the right shuttle to get back to the res halls. It's a lot of detail, but uh, on a small campus, we rely on um, fine tuning the process. Um, that's what the morning will look like. Two to three, we uh, invite you to have some cookies and punch with us on the waterfront. 
three o'clock, the president is looking forward to welcoming the families. Uh, three to four and four to five, we have a panel of guests uh, from the campus who's gonna, who are gonna talk to you about sense of belonging and how we engage with your students outside the classroom, give you all sorts of fun things that we put together uh, so that your students are uh, out of trouble and have plenty to do. Uh, and we're mostly successful. Um, and uh, after that, we will have a capping ceremony, which is um, from 5 to 5.30, and you will be good to take your hungry student out for dinner um, before saying goodbye. And um, that will be the end of uh, family day, and your student will start a whole orientation week, Monday morning, bright and early, 7 o'clock, 7.20. And it goes uh, till Saturday at 1.30. So that's, that's the orientation day and or the move-in day and orientation week. With that, I see the first question. We submitted uh, our psych ed report to a website. Um, will you contact the student for appointment? Mara, that, that's for you. Yes, absolutely. And I probably already have. So if they went in through our portal, our clockwork work portal, and hopefully they also submitted documentation, um, I'm caught up with, with everyone there. I think I may have one new student today. So I have probably already reached out, um, but I left my information in case other people need it as well. It's in the chat box. Um, and so if, if your student can contact me as well, just to follow up, that would be great. Um, thank you. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a closed group for families on uh, Facebook. Uh, I communicate through that often. If you haven't joined us already, please do so here. I've added that link to in chat. Um, we are also requesting all families to help us with getting four pass photographs of your student. Please check with them if they have not submitted a port pass photo. Here's the link. And if you just uh, search for port pass on our csum.edu website, uh, it'll bring you there, it'll have your submission link. Uh, we would love for, your, uh, for you to help us get your students photos over. Um, we have another question. When do students select classes? Looks like some already have been selected on their behalf. Crystal, you wanna take that? Yeah, most, so we're unique in that we block register our first time students. So whether they're transfer or first time freshmen, we provide their schedule for them because we've reserved sections for those students um, to make sure they stay on track right off the bat. So we register students that should be finishing up by the end of this week. If your student doesn't have a schedule by the end of this week, please email advisor at CSUM and we can, .edu, and we can figure out where their schedule is at um, and reach out to Office of the Register for help. I'm going to give you some confidential. It's not confidential. We're actually <laughs> going to open registration up next week. So there should be an email going out tomorrow letting all students know that we're gonna open up registration. So they'll have a week to make changes. So let's say they're in um, a course and it's a little early, maybe they can find a, la a later section that they might wanna swap into. If they have any questions about switching classes, um, they are welcome to email advisor at csum.edu and we can help sort of field those questions. And we're definitely available for appointments next week already. They're welcome to go to Passport Navigate um, and then make appointments or email advisor at CSUM and we can set something up. So they should have schedules. They want to make changes, do it next week. And then we'll open up registration again during the first two weeks of classes. So uh, the first two weeks of school, students are often changing things around um, and fine tuning their, their perfect schedule. So lots more opportunity to add and drop classes. Uh, I often just sort of a spin-off question I often get. Um, some students haven't, you know, 
had their transcripts finalized or posted. Admissions is working on that right now. So if students have any questions about transcripts, um, if they feel like they're put in a class that they've already taken, they're welcome to email advisor at CSUM or admission at CSUM.edu. Um, we can answer those questions and help them. Thank you, Crystal. Um, another question that's come up is, are cadets assigned a specific ad, uh, academic advisor throughout their time at CSUM, or can they speak with any one of the advisors at any time? Great question. So me and Katie are general advisors. Uh, we see all students. So we don't, we're not specific to any one major. Students can come on by and we'll help them with all their questions but students are assigned a faculty advisor. Like I said before, it's a professor in their major and they're required to check in with that professor once a semester. They go over classes, they talk about how their semester is going, um, they ask any other questions. And this is really not only to ensure that they stay on track in their program, but to sort of have a mentor in the program. When your student graduates, they have somebody who can write them a letter of recommendation now. Um, they have somebody to brainstorm career paths with who have actually had experience in the field. So everybody is assigned already a faculty advisor and students can see who that is in their PeopleSoft Student Systems Student Center and they're gonna get to meet them on August 24th. Yes, thank you. Um, and talking about uh, changes to schedules, I just want to let you know that um, this year for the first time, every day of orientation week, we've carved out an hour in the afternoon when all the uh, business departments are open, including the registrar's office, um, for students to do those kinds of things. They will be able to go to the cashier's office. They will be able to go to the registrar or do whatever they need to in terms of meeting folks for that during that hour when everybody's in their offices. So we're really excited that they'll utilize that time to take care of um, loose ends like that. Um, here's another question. Um, is there a place for cadets to find the classes offered and what the abbre abbreviations might mean and to identify classes uh, on their schedule? Yeah. So I'm going to put in the chat a link. Um, let me go ahead and grab it. So the link is to our curriculum roadmaps. So those curriculum roadmaps, they're still being updated um, for students entering in 2022, but you can look at the 2021 versions. We haven't had a ton of changes to curriculum over the past year. So if you go to that link, you can go to your student's major and see all of the classes they're required to take um, to finish their degree. So on that list, it'll show, you know, um, ENG 100, and you'll be able to see that that is their um, intro to computers class. So curriculum roadmaps will show what all of those classes are. Um, and students can find classes and play with schedules in their PeopleSoft Student Systems Schedule Planner. And I'm happy to help students figure that out. I'll put in one more link uh, in the chat, and it is a registration video and some tools that talks about how to use Schedule Planner, how do you register for classes. So I'll go ahead and throw that into the chat, and you can share that with your student. And if uh, for some reason you didn't take the um, exact link down or um, couldn't because you're driving, uh, please be sure to check out the csum.edu website and uh, do a quick search for these kinds of things. And it's very responsive. It's a Google uh, search engine, so it picks up things and um, lets you kind of go through on your own as well. So don't, don't be uh, shy to do the search at the website. Um, a little further up, I did um, also include the Keelhaller family page link which provides you with uh, any past and future recordings of sessions uh, that we do uh, for the families of virtual Zoom sessions. So if you didn't attend something or in the future will not be attending something, please go to that location and uh, find the recordings. Uh, and again, if you didn't take the link down, just, just search for Keel Hall of Family. Any other questions? All right, for um, 
any folks who are on the call and who are unable to uh, unable to give us their question in chat, please unmute and ask your question verbally. Um, I do have another question coming up. Is there another way to connect as a parent? Um, yes, there certainly is. I do um, one newsletter a semester that gets emailed to the, the address that your student provided. Uh, if for some reason you do not believe that we may have that uh, address, please send me your uh, contact information uh, at orientation uh, at csum.edu and we'll include you in that list. Um, and there are, there's definitely our website that has information and breaking news and other stories that can keep you connected to the, camp to the campus. All right, any uh, takers on uh, unmuting and asking questions? Okay, um, if after this call you think of anything, please again, reach out to us. We look forward to connecting with you. I, uh, we're all excited to see you on the 21st. Many of us will be there on Sunday um, to welcome you to the Cal Maritime family. And with that, I would like to take a moment to thank our presenters. Thank you so much, uh, Mara and Crystal and Erica for being with us this evening. And uh, thank you to all the families who carved out the time in the evening to uh, attend this session. And we will see you next week on um, Tuesday. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.